You're listening to Stimulus Tech Talk, a conversation-based podcast created by Stimulus Technologies that covers a range of topics related to business and technology. Welcome to Stimulus Tech Talk. I am Sherry Lip, the Marketing Manager at Stimulus Technologies, and I am here with our CEO, Nathan Whitaker, CEO, President of Stimulus Technologies. And it is July, so we are going to be talking about technology independence today. Hello, Nathan. Hey, Sherry, and thanks for everybody for being here. Um, so as we're talking about independence, July is kind of the month of that. Uh, what are we talking about in terms of business operations? I, I would say that when I think about independence in technology, I think of two things. I think the first one is um, being able to continue operations um, independent from technology or the vendors that you're using to provide technology. And of course, you know, it's a little scary for me to say that since we're a technology vendor for our clients. Um, But I I think uh, over-reliance on a single platform or single company without um, a potential disaster recovery plan or some type of plan in the event that that company has issues um, should be in place for all businesses. Uh, I, you know, we, in our Last podcast, we talked about CDK and the car dealerships that weren't able to continue operations because CDK went down. Um, I think that's what it's about, is is not over-relying on a single system or single platform uh, for your operations because your business is not, you know, you got to continue operating if if your systems go down. So I think it's independence from that. And then um, the second thing is, you know, independence from the fear of, you know, hacking and cyber, uh, you know, hacking events, um, you know, uh, those actors that are trying to take down your company of not living in fear, having that peace of mind that your systems are secure and that you have a partner or partners that are um, keeping you up and running in all events. So, so that's what I'm thinking about. Two things. One, you know, making sure that you have resiliency inside your company, uh, not over reliance on a single vendor or a set of vendors, and then to protection against uh, all the bad actors that are out there. Uh, and so, does that look different? Does independence look different in different industries? Obviously, you mentioned the auto dealerships, you know, and that was a vendor issue. So far, it looks like. So, does it look different in different industries? Um, I think a little bit, um, especially industries that are very reliant on cloud services. I see, like, for example, in healthcare, I see a lot of our clients moving towards these electronic health records systems um, where all their health records and billing and everything are integrated, which is great. It's wonderful. Um, but if that system goes down, um, they can't see a patient and deliver potentially critical care. So it's, you know, ensuring that, um, there's an independence from potentially that one vendor having issues, um, for, you know, you know, those type of events. Uh, and then there's, you know, the compliance aspect of it too, um, that, you know, the healthcare industry has high regulatory compliance and you have to ensure that your vendors are also compliant. So, you know, I think that uh, because the fines are really big for um, for lack of compliance, uh, you know, maybe differs for healthcare. Um, you know, we talked about dealerships, you know, over-reliance on a cloud vendor, also now highly regulated um, under the FTC uh, that they have to have a lot of compliance because they're basically banks, you know, according to the FTC, because they're they're doing finance uh, agreements with, um, you know, their vehicle sales. So, you know, that's, that's certainly one area. Um, you know, I, I think, you know, anything that's regulated has some type of, um, you know, a side to it that, they need to have some independence to make decisions to continue operations if, if things go wrong with the vendors that they're working with. Um, 
whether that's insurance in place or manual procedures or alternative procedures, uh, I think every business should be thinking about that. And uh, are we talking about vendors that can work together or is this a, a backup, you know, the same service as a backup? Um, it could be just alternative operations, you know, figuring out a way to continue operations in the event um, that the systems go down. So whether that's going back to paper copies and, you know, maybe manual receipts of services um, might be, you know, consideration if there's no way to do, uh, you know, complete backup of the system. It could be just doing backups of your environment. So we've talked a bunch on the show about, you know, having um, like if you're a Microsoft 365 customer, you know, having a third party that's backing up that environment that you can restore it somewhere else if it goes down and continue operations. So that's, you know, that's the kind of stuff we're talking about is having a way to have a, a second vendor uh, a second way of doing things um, and, and backing up your systems in case the primary uh, way goes down. And it could all, you know, go back to paper, you know. Uh, I like to say that, you know, that we used to do business um, on pen and paper uh, for many years. Um, you know, my first business when I was a, a kid um, was a little candy store. And I kept a manual ledger. My mom made me do it. Uh, keep a kept a manual ledger of everything that I bought and things I sold. And you know, I track inventory on on ledger paper uh, because that's how the way they ran their businesses in the 1970s um, and 1980s. They didn't really have a lot of money to put you know put in technology, nor was it really available for really small businesses. So you know, they they use ledger paper to do all of it, and and um, and it's not efficient, but it can be done. And so, you know, having a way to somehow continue operations in the event of these major attacks, I think is, is really important. Yeah, so you think so a part of technology independence is not being dependent on technology completely at all? I, I, I hate to say it because I'm a tech guy, you know, it's... <laughs> It can. I mean, it's. I think it's important in all aspects of our lives uh, to figure out how to be independent from uh, the technology. Um, you know, something. You know, just from a personal basis, I talk to my kids about. You know, it's don't be so dependent on your devices to live because those devices can go down. Um, we have to think outside of the you know, the systems, um, you know, that tell us how to think, I guess, at times. Um, but it's important to know those too. It's kind of like you have to live in both worlds, I I believe, uh, to, to be effective. Um, and it's also one of the reasons, like personally, I take a break from technology every year, go camping and backpacking and and get away from all the technology that's out there because it, it just reminds me and grounds me um, you know, to, to real the life that we live, um, aside from technology, um, you know, that may not, you know, you don't want to have to operate your business, you know, for weeks at a time without technology, just because you want to test it out. Um, you know, it's important to try to continue operations, you know, as if you have technology all the time, but, you know, keep in mind that it does go down and we see instance after instance of these systems going down. Well, I can only imagine that any business that has, you know, a system in place is only going to help their vendors or us, you know, if they have a problem, if they have, if they have something written down that can help solve the issue, we can't get into anything. Yeah. I think another part of it too, when we think about, you know, technology independence is having, you know, open standards. Um, you know, a lot of these vendors really close their ecosystem and don't talk, don't want to talk to other systems that are out there. And that limits, um, you know, the ability to transfer information around. I think it's important when you're analyzing and looking at vendors to sign with is ensuring that they have ways to interoperate with other, other vendors. And, you know, that goes, 
along the lines of getting backups from them too, but also, you know, sharing of data between systems is really important. And without that ability to interoperate, you may be locked into all their services. I was just having a discussion earlier this morning with um, one of our managers and, you know, we were discussing about choosing some new vendors and one of our vendors wants to lock us into their entire ecosystem. You know, from a pricing standpoint, it makes a lot more sense to buy all products from that single vendor. But the problem is that some of their products are good and some of them, there's better alternatives out there. So having that lock on us is not advantageous if we want to choose alternative solutions that may be better or better priced. And so, you know, buying, you know, a full suite of products from one vendor isn't always ideal either. I think it's important to have, you know, the right products and make sure that they talk together effectively and interoperate together effectively allows for you as a business owner to choose the best solutions that are available in the marketplace. And I think it's a good a idea to analyze periodically the different vendors because there's all kinds of new vendors coming up all the time that may have better technologies than you know these legacy companies that don't innovate as fast as some of the new services. So I think that's another part of it is you know constantly looking around uh, what other options that are out there and uh, seeing you know what better services there might be. Yeah, and how often do you hear that? Well, that's the way we've always done it. So <laughs> why change? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was uh, again talking to another guy yesterday um, that's done a lot of consulting work for large multinational companies. And, you know, he goes in and helps companies save money. And, you know, he often interviews employees uh, as he does this, asking, you know, what's your job? What do you do every day? And then, you know, only come to find out that they've been doing the same thing, you know, um, for 50 years. You know, the, the TPS report, I got to turn in my TPS report, right? You know, <laughs> uh, uh, reference from the uh, movie Office Space. But, um, you know, that. The, do you really need to do those same things all the time forever? And and that's, you know, where companies can save some money about, you know, really analyzing the way they do, um, you know, their work over time, which allows them to gain efficiencies and save money and be more profitable by analyzing that periodically. And, and obviously you're, you're a tech person, um, but how, how as a business owner, do you get peace of mind that you have, you know, this, um, you don't have to worry. I mean, right, you always worry, but you know that you can keep the business continuity going. You know, I, again, I like you just said, I run a business here too, and we are as a managed service provider, we're a big target for hacking. Um, so we almost every quarter analyze our vendors. Um, we don't choose new vendors every quarter, but we are constantly looking at how they're doing, how they're innovating. And then we have projects um, every quarter to analyze, to make sure that we're using the best services that are out there. Um, you know, our most comprehensive plan that we offer our clients, we implement internally, um, you know, to make sure that we are, you know, keeping our data secure, our backup secure. Um, but we're never um, complacent is I think the word we're, we're constantly looking at uh, issues that could come up. Um, and I can tell you, you know, I don't always sleep well at night because, you know, the attacks like CDK and some of these things that come out or, or the MGM attack that was, you know, six months ago, um, you know, is a good wake up call to our industry of, okay, what should we be doing better? And, uh, we're constantly adjusting our the way that we do business to ensure that we're protecting ourselves and protecting our clients because it's not just our business that we're protecting. It's it's all our clients that we have to worry about. So, you know, we have hundreds of customers that are looking to us to ensure that they stay up and running all the time. And so that, that does keep us up at night. Um, so I, I never, I guess I sleep with one eye open to this kind of stuff, I would say. 
Um, and so in terms of cybersecurity, you know, we've talked about cloud and backup and continuity, but the same principles apply. We've all, we've said many, many times, you know, you can't just plug in a antivirus and you're done with your cybersecurity. So how does that, how do these principles apply to cybersecurity? You know, I, again, a, just a layered approach, like you just said, you can't, a lot of these solutions can't be solved with technology. They have to be solved with people's and processes and systems. Um, so, you know, ensuring that you're having this discussion with your team about, um, you know, it's everybody's responsibility to have cybersecurity uh, and be um, a resilient organization. So, you know, making sure that you're training your employees properly and uh, keeping them up to date on all the things that they should be doing. So it's it's a constant ongoing effort for, for everybody um, inside an organization to stay uh, up. And then, you know, as, as things change, um, you know, training on new processes and ensuring those are followed through inside your organization, uh, but ensuring there's alternative processes if that software or system goes down for any amount of time uh, is really important. Now, what do you think the... Um... Let's say somebody was like, I'm going to kind of build a technology independence plan. How do you think they should get started with that? Well, I think first you have to you know, get an inventory of everything you have, um, all the solutions you have in place. So look at all your technology vendors, uh, including your managed service provider. Um, you know, have discussions with them about you know, what they're doing inside the organization to protect uh, your data and your infrastructure. So I think that's that's the first step is ensuring that you're, you know, you're talking to all your vendors. Uh, and then look to see if there's alternatives that you can have in place to, uh, in the event that those vendors go offline. So um, do you have, you know, for a cloud solution, do you have an alternative option for that? Um, do you have backups of that data? And then if you don't put those systems in place to back up your data, have, a, have an alternative option for that vendor. Um, and then once you do that is testing, you know, testing those systems constantly, um, ensuring that, um, you know, that they'll perform in the event of a disaster. Um, I, I, we actually had a new client that took us up on this recently. So we, we started service with this client a few months ago and they wanted to drill us on, you know, a major issue that they could potentially have. And so they called in an emergency ticket to our help desk, told us what was going on and they wanted to see how we would react. Um, we had no idea that they were going to do this, which was the right move on their part. Um, and luckily, we reacted just fine. You know, our processes and procedures were exactly what we told them they were going to be. And, uh, you know, it ended up being, you know, a fire drill without any fire. Um, but they were happy with the results. And I think that's that's what we should be doing with all our vendors is ensuring that they will react as promised in the event of a major issue. Um, so feel free to do that to us, you know, uh, as, as a technology company. Um, if you if you're concerned, um, I, I don't want everybody to do it every day, but it should be done periodically to ensure that we're, you know, we're going to deliver what we've promised and do it with all your all your technology vendors. Um, ask them the questions if you know, hey, we're concerned, you know, the CDK outage. You know, we don't want to be out for 10 days, you know, two weeks of service. Um, what, you know, can we receive a backup of our data? How can we ensure that we can continue operations if you go down? And they might say, well, we'll never go down. And that's a lie because anybody can go down. Um, so have those tough discussions with your um, service provider to ensure that they're, um, they got your back. And in addition to running drills, um, can stimulus technologies can help with um, the assessment? Uh, will they help with the? Will what we help with the vendor assessments? And... Yeah, that's perfect. That's a great question. So part of our um, management plan is is vendor management, and so 
we have a team of uh, technology uh, business representatives that uh, will help you with the coordination discussion with your vendors and analyze what um, what they should be doing. So yeah, reach out when you do your quarterly business review to your account manager and they will you know help you through that process to ensure that your vendors um, are providing the services that they should be doing. All right. Well, you know, it's a technology filled world and we're sitting in the middle of it. And as I just had uh, something beeped, even though I thought I had everything off because it's so surrounding us. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for thanks for all of your advice on this. And thanks, Sherry. It's, uh, and everybody have a wonderful Fourth of July Independence Day. It's a great celebration of the wonderful country that we live in that's given us um, so much independence from many different things and as a birth to so many of these technologies that we uh, maybe take for granted today. So there's so many things that we um, we have today that were, you know, the sacrifices of those that have gone before us. So I appreciate, uh, especially the veterans out there that served our country and uh, for all of you. So enjoy your 4th of July and the celebration of this uh, great nation, the United States of America, that we celebrate every, every July. Yeah.